Okay, good evening Super Trainees and welcome back. Now I'm going to, a number of you have written to me and asked me why I haven't done a vid on the Maxwell Richards situation, the President and um, the whole Integrity Committee and stuff. Reason being simple, Maxwell Richards is still on vacation, we haven't had a proper, besides that one statement he issued through via fax, he has not actually been here to defend the allegations against him and, and such. So when he does come back and grace us with his presence from his vacation, then I'll tackle that. I will, however, want to talk about the call, the hard Udicott um, investigation, which is still going on, and you had some new developments this week. Namely, call the Hart's wife, ex-husband, came out and, and testified, much to everyone's shock. And what he came about came out with in, in his statements was um, quite enlightening. Now, I, I, now, for the newer members of the group who don't know, um, about a year ago, I did a piece on Call the Heart. In fact, this is the very first issue that I did when I started Super Trainees. And um, I'm privy to a lot of people send me stuff, information, you know. There are people who are all about involved and have seen things, witnessed things, and they send me emails and messages, of course. And I have to read through and read through stuff. And, and one of the first things I got was an email, which I printed out here. It's about four pages long. And obviously, when I did the first initial article, I could not go into all of this. It's too much. And it had a lot of stuff about Paul the Hart, his wife, Mr. Khan, all these other people. And uh, I, did, I did like highlights of, of what came in it. And uh, because of what's happened in this testimony now, this week, a year later, um, I was able to corroborate some of the facts. And because some of the facts in this, artic in this article, this email I got, um, have been now been proven to be true, because it came out now in the trial, in the investigation, sorry, um, it makes me have a second wonder, a look at some of the other stuff which I've been pretty much ignoring. It's quite detailed. Now, if anybody wants to get this email, they can always uh, email me at super.trini at yahoo.com and I will forward the email to you. That's super.trini at yahoo.com. I'll put the uh, email address up on the top right hand corner. Now, I'll go into some of it. Now, there's so many stuff that came out that was true. Just, just like information about it. It talked about. Um, Call the Heart's wife, her name, um, well, she's a Malaysian Chinese woman, and her name is uh, Shereen Lee Hart, as well as her Malaysian name, which is slightly different, is something like Shari Shu Hua Li, sorry, my Chinese is terrible. And um, they talked about, you know, where, where she lived in Canada, and, and how she met Sahid Khan, who's the, the chicken magnate who lives in Freeport. And all this information has been here all the time. And, um, I mean, it corroborates everything, how they met, and how Hart met her through him, and eventually she left Canada. All that is incorporated now. So there's a lot of other stuff here about Hart, what he has done, and about what stuff he got from the Clico group of companies, from Woodbrook One Complex, and going on about his address. Now, there's a lot of stuff here that's kind of personal, which I think was unnecessary. Um, you know, I, I really just care about what information that affects gov uh, taxpayers' money being spent. Right? Anything else is superfluous. I, I, I just want to stick to the issues that are relevant. I don't want to engage in idle gossip and crap like that. Right? But it just goes to show you just how much information is coming out slowly simply because of someone's ex-wife, ex-husband angry and now the truth finally coming out. And I hope all these businessmen who engage in these illegal activities with Patrick and all these back handed dealings don't think for one second, as dumb as Patrick is, he's not going to take the fall for heart, and he's going to string out heart to dry. I'm glad, because um, hopefully the businessman will stop doing the corruption, and especially in the um, construction industry, which is abound. So I will forward any emails to anybody who wants it. It's really, really detailed. Right? Some of the stuff that came out in this trial, the main, th main issue of, of, of contention here is that Calder Hart was the director of Beauty Cut, and he issued a $368 million contract to construct the Ministry of Legal Affairs Tower, and the, the people who gave the contract to their com construction company is owned by his wife's brother and brother-in-law. Not owned, but they're the manager or top CEO, whatever category or label the title is, who cares? The point is nepotism. That's the point. Right? It wasn't tendered like a normal government program should be um, project. The other issue I want to take up as well, just on a highlight, as, as you know, um, Patrick is not in the country. He's in London, Lyman with Maxwell Richards. And um, when he leaves the country, he's supposed to put someone to be the acting president. And I just realized, well, not just realized, he's done it before, but I just want to draw it out that, again, um, Senator Seath is the acting president, prime minister of the country. Right? I have a problem with this. 
he's a senator. He's not an elected MP. He's not an, uh, he hasn't been elected. Now, as far as I know, just like in these states, if Obama gets killed, the vice president becomes the president. Uh, here, if something happens, God forbid, to Patrick while he's in London, right? Whoever is acting is going to become the prime minister. I think it's simple logic that the person should be elected. I don't understand how they can't understand this, how they can't grasp this concept, right? And you know why he ended up in a situation? It's because all the senior men in the PNM, Rowley and Value all of them, you get rid of them because they were arguing with them and contradicting them. Now we have a set of yes men who are too young to fully post, and anybody who is senior is basically a senator, I think with the exception of com common boots. Alright, so I don't know. I, I, someone can explain to me how this is allowed, but that's it. That's my gripe for this week, so have a good week.